Last week took place a charity banquet event organized by APO, Armenian American Health Professionals Organization, to support educational programs for doctors in Armenia and Artsakh. This year marks the 10th anniversary of APO's continuing medical education program, founded by Rafi Hovanesian, MD, and administered by the Fund for Armenian Relief. In 2020, this program expanded to meet the dual challenges of war and COVID-19 pandemic. The program has proven to be vitally important for the health and future of the families and our wounded soldiers living in Artsakh. The honorary guest was permanent representative of Nagorno-Karabakh Republic in United States, Robert Avetisian. Artsakhum, I see your growth. But there are many things that are very difficult to do. If you have a lot of people who are in the past, you can't get a lot of people who are in the past. If you have a lot of people who are in the past, you can't get a lot of people who are in the past. If you have a lot of people who are in the past, you can't get a lot of people Tanner Dajan Paterazma, Artsaka Aprume, Artsakum Kajovurt, Artsakum Kabnachun, Yev on Tanur, Ait Shurjanak, Arushapakan Hartseri, Munume, Greta and Nuina, Yharkim and Kunenk, I will shut the Kerr or Tevor Petke Verakan Novakan, I will Rushakan Gitelekan Orthopedic, Yevalan, Yev Transvera, Hatukusha Drutsune, Dorum or Pezi. Oknen Mer, Viravora Zatamartik Nerin, Mer, Bolorai, Hayanakis Nino Kevor Tuzvelen, Agresia in Tatskum, Yev Iden Shutaput Kerpov, Vera Gangnel, Minchain Makardaku in Karohana, Normal Martukan Kovapel, Bait and Tanur Armand Mergana Tumeng, Sankatsat, Volortum, Sankatsat, Bushakan, Volortum, Ojanda Kutsun. After Joyce Kordian, who visited Armenia nine times on a medical mission, read organization's statement. APO's President Larry Najarian welcomed everyone and stressed the importance of ongoing medical programs and initiatives. This program has really been so impactful. Uh, over 10 years, we spent well over a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, nobody can steal our buildings. Uh, this is intellectual capacity that we're sharing and giving to doctors who are very trained in a very different system than us. When we go to a doctor here in America, we assume they're board certified. We assume they reach their 100 hours of minimum required continuing medical education. In Armenia, you graduate after studying four years in a basement somewhere. There is no certification exam. Up till two years ago, there was no continuing medical education credit. And you were basically practicing medicine the ways you were taught many years before. This program has met that, filled that need for continuing medical education, teaching our young scientists, our young ambitious physicians, ways of evidence-based method. In this region, we've trained over 80% of the healthcare providers and physicians in Artsakh, which is truly incredible and definitely has made a huge impact. Um, how did this program get started? Uh, we were sitting in a board meeting and one of our most, uh, our youngest and most sagacious board members said, I have this idea of continuing medical education and was very passionate about it. And he made the proposal to the board and we are so happy we accepted it and here we are 10 years later. Unfortunately, he's joined Corin uh, in heaven, that's Rafi Hovanesian, but his wife Shohag is with us and she's gonna share a few words about his motivation for starting the program. Thank you so much for joining us. Wife of late Dr. Ravi Hovanesian, Shoha Hovanesian, spoke about the fund that their family have established to help APO continue vitally important medical educational programs. Before Ravi passed away, his wish was for us to establish a foundation for continuing medical uh, education, especially for Arzak, because he always felt that the Armenian doctors in Yerevan were, were really kind of on a very solid basis, but he was truly worried about the arts of doctors. And he passed away May 27, 2020. The war started for Arza in uh, September. I mean, the, the vision that he had, the premonition that he had, something like this was going to happen, it's beyond us. But this foundation is also for only Arza. So recently, uh, I should say, there was a phenomenal symposium organized by uh, three doctors 
and they wanted to establish the first symposium, Dr. Like Rafi Hobanesian Gastroenterology Symposium, because he was a gastroenterologist. And, uh, and I should say that it was a tremendous success. 1,000 participants participated for free. Five different continents participated. 64 different professors, doctors spoke. That was a great, great success. Uh, we are very, very fortunate and blessed to have a very erudite member of our board uh, who brings a lot of depth and experience uh, with him. Uh, the former Chairman Emeritus of uh, the Department of Endocrinology at Columbia University, also the Vice Chair of International Relations. Uh, he's going to speak a few words about the importance of education. So education is really very, very important. And um, the, I'd like to make just a comment about that. Um, I remember so well Rafi and his. In so many ways, he inspired all of us. Every time I met with Rafi, he would give me a new thought about what we are really wanting to do uh, in Armenia and in Artsakh. And let me give you an example <clears throat> of the power of education. My first trip to Armenia was in 2007. And um, I think I may have said this to some of you. Uh, I had never set foot in the motherland. And uh, when the plane landed literally on the ground, I said to myself, I'm home. It was a feeling that I think all of you may have had, and that inspired me to do whatever I could. And education, of course, is a key. It is power. The first year, I had a symposium on osteoporosis, and all of the speakers were not from Armenia. There was nobody in Armenia, with due respect to the educational program in Yerevan, who could have been part of the faculty. They didn't know enough. The last symposium I had, which was just before COVID in 2019, half of the faculty were Armenian doctors from Armenia. And that is a statement of what we can do. If we, if we educate and Armenia, Artsakh, we, we have an obligation because without education, we don't have very much to offer. But with education, there's no limit to what we can do. The representative of Etisian spoke about his appreciation to Armenian American doctors for their help in educating and supporting Artsakh doctors. It's a great honor and pleasure for me, and I'm sure I can speak also on behalf of my wife, to meet you all and to say, to express our gratitude, how grateful we are, not because of the stuff Larry just said that I work here for 12 years. No, just because we are Artsakhsi, that because uh, we were born in Artsakh, because we have seen what's going on in Artsakh. We know how tough it is to be Artsakhsi, and we uh, know how tough it is for Artsakhsi to remain uh, as such now. We are undergoing through a very difficult period. We're there, we're wounded, but we're surviving. The dynamics is, is really positive. We hope that uh, we will take this chance which is a very, very uh, pricey. It came at a very high cost to us, and it w that we will continue to strengthen as an Armenian home, and to make sure that every time Mr. Belezikian or anyone who touches down in Armenia, they will feel that they have arrived home, and that's a common fight. We cannot win it on our own. If Artsakh is not right, Armenia is not right, and the diaspora is not right. If Armenia is not right, Artsakh cannot be okay, and diaspora cannot be okay, and, and everything. We are part of the same body. And the only time when we demonstrated miraculous victories was when we were together. When we said no to all the challenges, when we say we're not panicking, when we say we're not taking our hands off our homeland, we're going to continue the fight. Whatever you're doing now, it has several very, very important meanings for us. The first is that we're very hopeful that the, your knowledge, your experience, and we've heard some world-known names here, uh, will be transferred to our young specialists, who very often just need a chance. Artsakh has never been included into anything international which can give our folks the opportunity to demonstrate themselves. 
to learn, to take that knowledge back home and to strengthen. Because nobody wants to deal with Artsakh because of political, I don't know, whatever it is. They even can not care about human health if it comes to policy, unfortunately. But this is the, in a very, in the most, in the best sense you can uh, imagine, this is the resource that we have. This is the most reliable resource that we have. This is the only alliance that we have, our Artsakh, our Armenia, and our diaspora. We need you there. You need yourself in Artsakh too, because by strengthening us, you strengthen yourself. You strengthen your heritage, you strengthen your names, and your knowledge, your passion serves a very noble goal. Yes, ch kids will be born. You have to ask what. It's our job to make it happen in terms of social policy, public policy, security, and we're glad that you share the responsibility of easing the healthcare burden because that's that's a traditionally a very troubled uh, troubled area of Artsakh's life. I'm I'm a son of a doctor. My mom was for 12 years doctor in chief of our Republican Hospital. I know what it is to be a doctor. I know how noble your profession is. I, know, I can imagine how noble are the people who are not doctors, but who are joining this cause. And another message, which is equally as important, because it, also, because it also saves lives, is that despite all the talks, despite all the pessimism, despite all the tragedy, despite all the losses, those of us who survived we survived not only as human beings, but we survived as soldiers for Artsakh and for Armenia. By this unity that you help us to demonstrate, you inspire us. We need to show to everyone in Artsakh, to everyone in Armenia, to everyone in the US and around the world, that Armenian nation will not take its hands away from Artsakh. An engaging Q&A with Representative Avetisian followed, during which he took time to answer many not only medical but also political questions regarding the current situation in Artsakh. On behalf of Artsakh, to save the Republic, thank you so much for everything that you've done to help us. Even though small in size, the event had a successful fundraising results. Yet another important initiative for members of APO to continue medical education programs for the doctors in Armenia and Artsakh.